Joining us this week on Public Occurrences, the Wasteland Theatre Company. So I'm joined here by Northern Harvest, who is part of the Wasteland Theatre Company. And they have been running some shows very much like Shakespeare in the Park through Fallout 76. How are you doing there, Northern Harvest? Good. Thank you for having me today. No problem at all. Let's start with an easy one. What was your first Fallout moment? How did you get into the series? So I'm very, very new to the Fallout series. I only started playing Fallout just over a year ago. We started with a couple of workmates who wanted to play together, um, you know, a multiplayer game when we're done work. And they eventually moved on. But I was just, I was captivated by a, a world full of stories and of the the human struggle, the fallen root, like the ruins and the fallen buildings and something really just struck me about, you know, the mortality of it all, of the, the stories of every, sorry to be more, but the stories of every corpse lying on, on, on the road or in the corners. I soaked it all in and, and imagined these folks went through in their last moments, which are so beautifully displayed by the game, let alone the little notes and the holotapes that all had stories to them. And, and that was incredibly touching in a, in a, you know, in a funny way, it's especially as a new Fallout player. I basically just started you know, during the, the global pandemic. So there are a lot of connections between the idea of an, an apocalypse, so to speak, or of some major world-changing event and then looking at these folks and all the stories and struggles they went through. That was kind of my first fallout moment that really that really kept me playing, just seeing these people and imagining the stories. That's really interesting to hear that uh, new into the series. Have you gone into looking at any of the classic games, or have you just kept the Fallout 76? You know, I've, I've been playing 76, and it's now consumed a lot of my time putting on full Shakespeare plays in it. But I did... Uh, recently, and this isn't classic, but I did recently just finish my first playthrough of Fallout 4, and I just uh, started Fallout 3. I, I started Fallout New Vegas first because a bunch of people were saying how wonderful it was, but I didn't really, it didn't really, the opening few moments didn't work for me, so I went to Fallout 3 first, which the opening moments did work for me, and I'm sure I'll go back to New Vegas because you know I have to give it a, a good chance and I hear good things about it. I haven't done one or one or two. When I think back to high school, it strikes me that there were two type of kids, and I think this even goes in into adults, that there's those who get Shakespeare and those who don't. What was the moment or passage that really made Shakespeare connect with you? And so this is this is surprising to most people, but I was not a Shakespeare person. I didn't like Shakespeare, and I even took 17th century literature in, in university, and I avoided Shakespeare as hard as I possibly could, you know, opting for like Paradise Lost, like Milton and John Doan and and those types of, of poets I was more drawn to than Shakespeare. I felt as a, a young person, Shakespeare, I didn't connect to it. I was more interested in, in punk music and all of that. What really brought me back to Shakespeare, I kind of say I've been rediscovering Shakespeare as an adult. I'm now in my 30s. I have two little kids. It was actually Fallout that brought me back to Shakespeare because, especially Fallout 7-6, and I built a theater because I saw somebody else had made a, a movie theater. This fellow from the UK called Lemus, he built a movie theater. So I built a, like a physical theater just for fun and started posing mannequins in different costumes according to different pop culture movies and plays. And, and I had one you know, set up for Macbeth. It was pretty neat and people were coming by and checking it out and, and eventually talked with some some role players, the Fallout 5.0 New Responders. It's a role play group that role plays responders in Fallout 7.6. And we discussed putting on an actual live play of Macbeth. And that's really what brought me back to Shakespeare because you take the Macbeth script and looking at it again, which I haven't looked at since since high school, right? I just fell in love with it right away. The writing, finally, it made sense. The stories and the characters and the themes Everything that the high school teacher talked about, you remember high school teachers, the theme, the theme, the theme, and all of that started falling into place. And I was revering this script and laughing at the funny parts and really following along with the intense parts. So it was really Fallout, funny enough, that helped me rediscover Shakespeare for the first time in probably 20 years. And that's what our productions are doing for a lot of people right now, which is what is drawing so many Fallout fans to what we're doing is because people like Shakespeare. You know, some people don't. But even those who are playing Fallout who, like me, didn't look at Shakespeare again, are being drawn back to it. They see 
the fun in Shakespeare and the creativity and the ability to play with other people in something that's as as classic and well known as the Bard. That's really interesting. I'm surprised it was the fallout that got you keen to it and yeah. and and hearing the link through there, Macbeth. Would would you say it's Macbeth that fits in best with the war war never changes theme, or or would you think another play? No, like. <laughs> So since we did our first live performance of Macbeth last winter, and since then we've held a Shakespearean sonnet festival in February, and then we did a live full performance of Romeo and Juliet in the spring. I've been going through Shakespeare. I've got a complete works of Shakespeare book, which has all of Shakespeare's plays, because I'm really into it. I'm all in Shakespeare these days. And if there's one play that I think matches the best the, with Fallout. It's actually Coriolanus. It's it's not one that is people play on stage as often as the Macbeth and Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet, those ones. But Coriolanus really stood out to me as the war never changes theme. If you imagine, and this is what I do when I'm reading a, a Shakespeare play because it always has my fallout lens on. I think about what factions and what people are involved in the play. So when we did Macbeth, we did it organically and, and properly. It was set in Scotland and all of that. But when we did Romeo and Juliet, we changed things up a little bit, having Montagues and Capulets, the two warring households. And we changed that to the two factions in fallout, the settlers and the raiders. And there's two lovers from each of those factions who, who meet. And then the romance and tragedy unfolds between those two factions. But Coriolanus, which takes place in Roman Empire, and this, this general who's very arrogant and full of pride and uh, is an amazing general, and he's fighting the... The Volskins with Alphidius who are like sort of like a rebel group. And I just imagined the Romans as the Brotherhood of Steel, Volscians as raiders, and these two groups fighting each other and Coriolanus eventually walking over to them and seeking his glory by joining their side and ultimately coming back. And you know, the, there's a whole tragedy involved. But but that one I think has two two warring groups that really fit the sort of Brotherhood of Steel and Raiders image in my mind. And there's actually a movie with Ralph Fiennes, Lord Voldemort, played Coriolanus. And Gerald Butler actually was playing the other side. I don't think it got a lot of rave reviews as modern adaptations of Shakespeare don't necessarily, but I thought it was great when I had my Fallout lens on. So I encourage anybody to watch that movie. If you're a Fallout player and you want to figure out what I'm talking about, watch that movie and just imagine the Brotherhood of Steel and the Raiders and you'll get it. It'll click. I, I will definitely be doing that. <laughs> a lot of lore and other information within Fallout 76, a lot of the storytelling and world building, is done very much in a passive way, coming back from its roots back when it didn't have NPCs in it. As you've played through, has there been any stories that you've come across where you've just thought of, geez, I wish there was a play of this or a movie <laughs> of this or something like that? And I liked the story in Fallout 76 of the, the Mistress of Mystery. They were going someplace with that and as a you know as a quest line and there was a story and there were lots of different characters so i think that the segment would actually make a pretty good <laughs> movie or, or play or story the mistress of mysteries it's actually something that i wish there was more more story to because i was already captivated by it i couldn't agree more that's that's actually my favorite quest line out of any fallout game yeah and then it, and then it ends uh, unfortunately it's a tragedy you see coming because of the way fallout 76 was originally built but yeah it's... right yeah well i'm i'm blessed and and, and lucky that I started playing well, well after all of the the launch chaos that I don't know anything about. <laughs> so I started playing at a really good time where I could just I played it and enjoyed it from beginning to now. So as we record this, you do have the Shakespeare Sonnet Festival going on again, but that of course will be over by the time that we do play out this record this recording. <laughs> what more can we look forward to though in the next few weeks and months from the company? Today is Sunday, the September fourth. <laughs> is our second Shakespeare Sonnet Festival. I'll, I'll just talk a second about it because we did something really unique this time. Um, so we have about 20 sonnet readers from across the Fallout 7-6 community who will be taking part. And it's going to be across every system. You know, so Fallout 7-6, it's not across systems. You play on Xbox, you can only play with Xbox people. Um, but our Sonnet Festival will be on PlayStation, PC, and Xbox. We have a stage on each system built by a player, and then the players from within that system who registered will be reading their sonnets on that stage, and it'll all be broadcast on Twitch so that people who are in the PlayStation stage can also watch the Xbox people and can also watch the PC people, and all happening at the same time. So we're actually, we found a way to actually play together with people on other systems even though the way it's set up that's 
possible. Um, and on top of that, we saw that, and this is, uh, we used a lot of the Fallout wiki for this, is that we asked every participant to pick their favorite vault or to go through the wiki that shows all of the numbered vaults and to go through that list and find a vault that has a story based on the wiki, unless you uh, know it yourself, find a vault that has an interesting story that means something to you. Pick your favorite vault. Let's say someone picks vault 76. There's 154 Shakespeare sonnets. So they pick vault 76 and they're assigned sonnet 76. They pick vault 111, they're assigned sonnet 111, and so forth. Vault. They then are going to be reading the sonnet from a perspective of their vault dweller from that vault with the experiences that they're experiencing with the with the sick experiments going on in there, or a scientist from that vault, from Vault Tech, they're trying to find meaning within the sonnet that applies to their experiences in the vault. So for example, spoiler, I'm doing sonnet 19 corresponding with Vault 19. And in Vault 19, the Vault Tech experiment was to induce paranoia amongst the, the vault dwellers there without using violence or, or chems, right? To actually use like psychological experiments on these people to make them go crazy and suspect each other and, and create that kind of environment. The sonnet 19, the corresponding sonnet, is all about time and age and how he's actually having a war with time in that in that sonnet, which makes me think of a, a vault dweller in Vault 19 you know, locked in a room with a ticking clock going crazy and just yelling at time that's devouring him. And sonnet 19 starts with devouring time is the first line, right? Like he's, he's exclaiming it to this ticking clock in his confined little room in the vault. So that's just an example of how Shakespeare's sonnets and the readers who are reading from the perspective of dwellers in those vaults, how those things can kind of blend together. And it's going to be really quite interesting. Um, um, I wasn't expecting anything quite like that. We do have something planned for folks who aren't going to be at the Sonnet Festival. In sort of mid-October, we're in rehearsals right now. We're doing a full performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is going to be an exciting one because it has so much. It's a, it's a comedy. We've only done tragedies so far, which kind of fit the Fallout world. We have a little twist in there that, that folks can look forward to. And we're really playing with the stage and the lighting and the, the natural environment. It's an open-air stage that we've built, the natural environment of a region called the Meyer in Fallout 7-6, which has a lot of really neat mist and mysterious environmental setting. So that's coming up in mid-October. You can follow us at 7-6 Theater on Twitter for all of our promotions that we'll be doing leading up to that show. And is that the best way to get in touch if you want to get involved as well? Yeah, Twitter's, Twitter's the best way. It's at 7-6 Theater with R-E, not E-R, Theater. And that's the best way to keep up with what we're doing. We also do lots of other fun things. We do like little photo shoots of scenes from movies just for fun, you know, in our downtime and get distracted by radiation rumble and events like that all the time. And, and you mentioned Twitch. Do you keep recordings of these open on Twitch? As mentioned, we do have a group called the Fallout 5 Responders, a role-playing group. They uh, often are our producers for live streaming on Twitch. They also have our previous shows on, on their YouTube. So Fallout 5 search them on YouTube, and you'll see some of our productions there along with some of their amazing responder roleplay videos and machinima that they do full-length movies in Fallout 7-6. And our Sonnet Festival is going to be broadcast on the United Wastelanders Network, Twitch. So you can check those folks out as well. Well, I think I've just found something to do this weekend. Thanks very much for joining us there, Northern Harvest. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. 